guys what's up so this is environment and ecology biodiversity is containing so that is 2 for environment and ecology this point 2 is for biodiversity and this point 1 is for the first part that is biome so this is presented by me and obviously if you want to know anything about this education revolution please spread the word as much as you can i really appreciate that especially yaar jo coaching wagera nahi le sakte those who cannot come way to delhi or those who cannot leave their job because of financial constraints please do it for them any query doubt or if you want me to make a specific video you know where to go uh, please comment with the video or youtube on the facebook page but now apart from this there is one another avenue for you guys which will be awesome so this is an academy official app uh, as promised we delivered and it is here for your use and will coming soon for ios that is apple and you can ask your queries you can ask a doubt you can demand a particular video basically it will be like janta darbar where aap apni farmaish rakhenge aur main uske accordingly video tutorial aapke liye bana sakte hain then there is a chat section of the app also where you guys can chat among each other or with me and if you put good questions i'll reply to them i will answer them and all the new notifications ki koi video release ho raha hai video polls special q and a test series and much more is sab kuch release hoga app pe so please download the app and on your android devices as well as apple when it's available and uh, let's share what it will look like so this will look like something like this click on install and you will get the app so this is the playlist portion of the app that is the first window then this is the timeline where all the videos according to the timeline will be available you have to log in using your facebook and this is an awesome app i will just show you the reviews these are the videos and finally this is the chat section so you can go here and you can chat as much as you want so as you can see so 176 have already reviewed it so this is the review 4.8 out of 5 not bad eh so some are saying an academy is beyond limitations that is the whole concept of an academy it's an orthodox it's unpredictable it is a very helpful help sir and you can read all sorts of reviews please add your own i'll really really appreciate it and uh, try to get five star uh, i'll appreciate that anyway so we'll talk about uh, do download and review it uh, it will be a game changer and i really sincerely believe that the way you prepare for upsc will change forever i wish i was an aspirant to the academy was there again and finally you will be in control of how you want to imbibe knowledge you will decide what to learn how to learn and when to learn anyway so we'll be dealing with biomes what do you mean by biome first picture that comes in my head so i remember something tropical rainforest as a tundra taiga basically it is either a geographical unit or it is a climatic unit is that understood and usually they are defined only for land area of the earth and there are particular plants which has a particular leaf type with particular seasons climates and species which live in these areas and these are usually of subcontinental dimensions they are they can vary depending on classification to classification from 10 to 60 but we will be dealing with about 11 or 12 so this was something about biomes so as you can see so as the precipitation increase and as the temperature increase you have tropical rainforest and as both of them decreases you have this is the desert and if the temperature goes further towards zero you have cold desert and if it's further is minus it goes towards tundra but tundra has slightly more precipitation so if the precipitation is less than 25 cm annually it is desert then you have temperate forest temperate rainforest tropical seasonal forest which are also called as savanna or tropical grasslands then you have shrublands somewhere here so this is a very good diagram anyway you can watch the entire environment and ecology series from part 1.1 to 1.9 before you move any forward just type high yield series and you will get the answer anyway so biomes are largest recognizable subdivision of terrestrial ecosystem entire definition ho gayi hai maine pehle bhi batayi thi they are geographically and climatically defined bilkul sahi baat hai they can also defined as assemblage and association of plants and animals they form a regional ecological unit of subcontinental dimensions okay very clear cut definition but it's a huge area then it can contiguous areas it means it's in continuous there is no breakage of similar climatic conditions and with communities of plants animals and soils which are also similar now biomes uh, basically hum char tarah se divide karte hain first is the plant structures 
that is either their trees or their shrubs or their herbs or their grasslands or their tall trees then leaf types either it can be broad leaves or it can be needle like leaves then plant spacing again whether it's dense forest or it's woodland with good enough spaces or savanna which has huge grasslands and slightly scattered trees and finally by climate on the other hand eco zones are defined by genetic taxonomic or historical similarities while biomes are not biome distribution is basically governed by annual variation in temperature obviously known if it's 20 up to 30 is tropical rainforest if it's less than zero it can be cold desert or it's tundra Minerals availability obviously rainfall obviously tropical rainforest so it means rain defines the rainforest and availability of sunshine so finally as a very very simple rule of thumb altitude will mimic latitude so as you go away from equator species will decrease as you go above from mean sea level species will decrease so altitude will mimic latitude biodiversity increase towards equator and with increasing humidity so as you move from equator towards pole it is called as latitudinal gradient number of species as well as species diversity decreases for example amazon rainforest has 20 times more species than temperate that is why they produce huge amount of oxygen and they are called as lungs of earth very very important question why high biodiversity see there are relatively undisturbed they are huge like less seasonal variation more constant and predictable environment first of all ice age and glaciation did not occur here so the environmental conditions are relatively undisturbed undisturbed hongi to species a lot of time to evolve evolve hongi to they can find their own niches niche agar specific ho jayenge to there will be less of competition in case of the niche is similar one of the species will be eliminated more resources available like sunlight etc it will lead to higher productivity no doubt about it again there will be specific ecological niche leading to higher biodiversity ecological niche means a particular function which is performed only by that particular species their own particular area finally there is a concept called as SAR or species area relationship basically as the number of area will increase the number of species increase but only up to a limit very very simple logic nothing special in it then we have 11 biomes which I will be dealing with in subsequent two or three parts the first one is the forest they can be either tropical or temperate among tropical they can be rainforest or deciduous and again temperate they can be deciduous or coniferous very very simple then grassland can be tropical or temperate then we have desert mediterranean tundra temperate monsoon time and cool temperate east margin type we will be dealing one by one they are also called as tropical wet forest also called as tropical moist broadleaf forest this is wwf classification world wildlife fund they are also called as low land because they lie near to equator evergreen rainforest because they are evergreen there is no leaf falling pattern so basically they lie between 0 to 20 degree 8 north and south that is between cancer and capricorn cancer is above capricorn is below then the south america obviously amazon central america obviously belize honduras and el salvador these are the countries then we have africa congo then we have southeast asia which are malaysia indonesia etc Finally, some islands in Pacific, Caribbean and Indian Ocean. I have already shown you the map. This is how you retain. Temperature varies from 20 to 30 degrees Celsius, but in all 12 months, it has to be more than 18 degrees Celsius on an average. Seasonal range is barely more than 3 degrees Celsius. Daily range can be there, but not seasonal range. Finally, example in India includes Western Ghats, Northeast and Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Then rainfall. It is cloudy weather conditions, especially in the time of afternoon and it rains almost every day from 3 to 4 p.m. So the relative humidity will obviously be high and as the humidity increase, as the temperature increase, as the sunshine increase and as you come close to equator, as the altitude decreases, you have very, very high biodiversity which and this high humidity and rain every day, heavy rainfall from 175 to 200 centimeters annually can never be less than 168 centimeters but it can be more than 1000 centimeters certain places like Chera Punji and all in Meghalaya has very high they are also called Nosen Ram so the very high rainfall the term season is absolutely meaningless because there is no cold no hot go to Chennai and ask what is season they will they will not understand go to Delhi they will understand so the term weather and climate are used interchangeably in such areas so basically there is stratification this is called as mains my answer one word and different meanings 
the same meaning different words layering stratification hierarchy vertical patterns or multi layering so this is an example of a tropical rainforest so there will be a forest floor which will receive only 2% of sunlight and only adapted plants can grow here which are specifically adapted to it obviously it contain decaying matter which will disappear quickly because of the warm and moist condition there will be proliferation of fungus and bacteria which will act upon it and it will convert into a hummus no hummus humus hummus to khate hain yaar pita ke sath anyway under story layer this is the second layer which is between canopy and forest floor so you can imagine something like this this is forest floor this is under cover this is canopy and finally this is emergent layer so canopy is huge primary layer of the forest it has the maximum diversity it has the maximum visibility and they are 20 to 55 meter in height they are the tall broad leaved evergreen plants finally emergent layer kuch ped hote hain jo exceptionally aage aa jate hain they are 50 up to 80 meter they have to tolerate hot temperature and strong winds certain species like crowned eagle and large flying fox live only in emergent layers and if these emergent trees fall it will create gaps in this hierarchy so the vegetation is very high density obviously because it supports rich flora of epiphytes epiphytes include orchids bromeliads and there are other plants like mosses and lichens so lichens are fusion of algae plus fungi mosses are nothing but bryophytes so you must have heard there are five type of plants algae bryophytes pteridophytes gymnosperms and angiosperms basic botany very very basic level so epiphytes are plants which grow on other plants just for support plus they do not harm them but they can derive water and minerals from the rain soil debris which is stuck to the plants finally there is great species diversity but few individuals of each species survive trees are broad leaved never experience seasonal leaf fall seasons are unknown selva selva is the term which is given to amazon rainforest in brazil and south america the soil is surprisingly lacking in nutrients this is because of extensive leaching there are two types of selva soils one is called as alti soil or ulti soil which is well weathered acidic red clay soil other is also the same that is oxy soil is exactly the same but ulti soil lacks calcium and potassium while oxy soil is very well drained Obviously, economic exploitation of such forest is very difficult because of high density, poison snakes, difficult animals. The species is not single. The species is not repetitive like in tundra and taiga region. And finally, trees are hardwood type, and important species include. Uh, pardon me for the spelling mistake. And important species include mahogany, rosewood, and cinchona. Cinchona is the plant which is used for treatment of various diseases. If you know, please let me know in the comments. and download the app and hit the thumbs up button would a good review i'll appreciate it then we have desert biome desert first of all it's not a vegetation it is a climatic term you have to understand it like tropical rainforest is vegetation defined taiga tundra are vegetation defined however desert is not vegetation defined desert can have extensively different meaning from let's say cold desert of gobi and takla makan to very hot desert of sahara and very dry desert of atacama any place on earth which has either less than 25 cm annual rainfall or if it has more than evapotranspiration water losses that is evaporation plus transpiration transpiration is loss of water from stomata of the plants if that is higher than precipitation then this place is called as desert so there are four general types of adaptation either roots are modified in forms of shape or size so they can reach extensively deep they can be the tap roots or they can involve development of thin air like rootlets to penetrate small pores obviously cactus stems apne dekha it's very juicy very stemmy it's very fleshy spongy such stems can store water they are called succulents then leaf can be modified in form of very waxy hard so no stomata are there for transpiration they can be white and shiny so that they can reflect all sunlight and finally they have spines and cactus so there is no water loss and finally the reproductive cycle is very very awesome so xerophytic plants they lie dormant for years without perishing however when rain eventually arises they pass through an entire cycle of germination flowering and fruiting and seed dispersion in only a few days this is the beauty finally desert are of two type hot and cold 
which a cold coastal type is a subtype of these deserts so hot deserts are mostly subtropical so i'll be telling you certain examples sahara in north africa arabian desert in middle east and kalahari desert in southern africa like angola botswana namibia africa etc etc so you can read about it from this list i am not going to uh, speak everything just remember daste kaver and daste lut both are in iran kaver is great salt or namak desert while daste lut is emptiness in iran kalahari desert is in southern africa and australia has these four deserts more or less contiguous sonoran and mohave are in usa thar desert is in indian pakistan so can you see this desert this is sonoran extending to mexico this is mohave desert this is obviously your uh, sahara desert this desert is the ste kaver and the ste lut this is thar desert this is the great middle east desert and these are simsam sonoran uh, simson victoria these are deserts here and finally this is kalahari desert so hot desert they lie between 20 to 30 degree north and south latitude on either side of the equator they occupy the western side of continent because of the trade wind so trade wind blows like this they take the moisture away then it leads to very dry conditions so it leads to very high temperature clear sky and almost complete absence of rain example death valley in california where temperature may reach more than 50 degree celsius then large daily range of temperature din mein aap dekhoge 50 hoga raat mein it can be minus 20 so this kind of temperature may vary then it can be low humidity and very very high evaporation and finally because of the extensive alkalization of the soil there can be helophytic adaptation which helps them to survive in salty depression and finally westerly can also lead to their warmness because it brings from the ocean finally we have cold deserts these are beyond the subtropics and they are towards the polar side example gobi antarctica may not be considered as desert patagonia is in argentina takla makan is in china and kizilkum is in central asia and finally karakum is in turkmenistan Colorado plateau of Great Basin Desert is a cold desert and finally those cold desert which are on the coastal side like Namib desert in southern africa and Atacama desert in south africa are example of cool coastal type so this is an example of uh, central so please remember this map Kazakhstan has Astana and Almaty these are the important cities so Turkmenistan has the desert this is exclusive one for itself while rest is shared this is a very important map the shan base from tajikistan finally uzbekistan has two cities samarkand and tashkent and bishkek is in kyrgyzstan this side we have caspian sea other side we have black sea so anyway guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you want me to make such innovative videos to help you learn easier do download the app uh, and uh, do hit the thumbs up on this video you can also tweet to me your query at romansani this is the facebook page facebook.com/romansani.official Keep watching keep supporting let's together create this revolution thank you for watching the video have an awesome day